Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is don't starve. Didn't you do this before? Yeah, sort of. Old version, very old. To the point where I gotta do it again, honestly. I did say I'd revisit it once it had more content, so I think now's a pretty good time. It's officially released on Steam. The next update, as you can see, is in 14 days. The giant ham bone that says so, and you can't argue with that. And a lot's changed in the Don't Starve universe, so now is the time to revisit it. What is it, you might ask? It is a survival game. And a survival game in perhaps the... one of the truest senses of the word. By a company called Clay. They brought you Shank, Shank 2, Mark of the Ninja, Eats, and a couple of other nice things. They're a pretty cool company as far as I'm concerned, and they seem to be doing rather well for themselves. Don't Starve originally released as a beta pre-order, and it used to be a Chrome app. I mean, it's, it still is, but back then, that seemed like it was the only way to play it. Now they've got a full standalone client, it's released on Steam and everything's hunky-dory, you can play it in whatever resolution you like, as long as that's what you set your desktop to, because, well, it's not exactly that impressive an options menu. You can mess around with your resolution, you can turn a few things on, turn a few things off, change your display, set to 120Hz refresh rate, even though the game locks to 60fps, so whatever. I guess for a 2D game, it's probably fine. Really. It's... I wouldn't even necessarily call it isometric, it's just sort of a two-dimensional game. The art style's a little odd, so it's difficult to fully describe exactly what it is without showing it. But it does the job. I do like the fact that it lets you mess around with your HUD size. That's always nice. Not enough games let you do that. More often than not, you'll find games that don't scale the HUD properly based on what resolution you've got, so the HUD ends up being either too small or too large, taking up too much space or too little. So yeah, it's nice to be able to mess around with that. It's also rather unusual to find out exactly what the last build was and when the next update is, and actually have that in-game, saying, here's when the next stuff's gonna be, and we're gonna announce it and you can go watch it on a live stream. That's, that's odd. It really is. Seems like it's a game that is very much in the course of development. If I'm honest, I haven't encountered any bugs with it, which is always good, but I don't know if a game like this would ever be fully complete, in the sense that is Minecraft ever fully complete? Yes, it did get updates after the Ender Dragon and nonsense like that, lots of updates, it continues to get content updates to this day, plus modding support that means there is much more of it. So, what is it all about? Well, it's about surviving, and doing so by not starving, it... To be honest, not starving is usually the least of your worries. There's a lot of other things you need to worry about. Of course, you can die from various other means. You can also go insane. It's a little unpleasant. So, let's get into the game and check it out, shall we? I am going to... I think... Should I be playing this one? I guess it's this one. Now, one thing I actually didn't get to show you... Let me show you this. I guess I can set up a new game and show you this right now. So there are multiple characters available, and you can unlock these via experience points. You get experience by playing games that don't starve. It's really as simple as that. So when you die, the longer you survive, the more experience you get. This is your default character. He is Wilson. His special power is he grows a magnificent beard, which you might think, well, that's nothing, right? That doesn't mean anything. It actually does, because this game is freaking weird. The beard is a resource. I kid you not. Willow, the fire starter. She is immune to fire damage and also, also starts little fires in the dark. So if you get caught in the dark, she'll randomly start little fires, which makes things a little bit easier, but at the end of the day, you don't want to be caught in the dark anyway. And this guy, this is the guy I'm playing, the strong man. He is mighty. No one is in fact mightier, according to him. He has a high health and a big stomach. He also hits harder. So you could, you have... I think you have to eat more as him, but you can also, you can also eat more, which means you can stay longer without starving. I assume that's what it means. And then there's a bunch of other characters available here as well. So you unlock these as the game goes through. I'm not really sure which order you unlock them in or why. Like for instance, I haven't got this guy and you've got this guy. It's kind of weird. I got Willow second, but I don't know really what's going on with that. Each of these characters has their own character model, their own strengths, and also has their own phrases and text. There is no actual voice acting in this game. There's just some strange little noises that are made 
that represent speech. We could also customize the world. Now, this can make the game either easier or harder, depending on what you want to do. So you can do pretty much whatever you want with it. Like, you want to make it really, really easy. You can crank up the amount of carrots. These apparently allow you to respawn. I have personally never found one in all the play that I've done in this game so far. Which is kind of ridiculous. Increase the amount of natural resources. You can also increase the amount of enemies if you so desire. I would strongly advise against it, but you can do it. One way or the other. Alright. So. Without further ado, let's jump into the game and jump in with one of my files. I believe this is four days in. I've got a reasonable amount established, so I think this is a good opportunity to start. I may very well end up dying and losing my entire character during this playthrough because that's the nature of the game. There is permadeath. Once you're dead, that's it. You've got to start the whole bloody thing again. So, without further ado, let's get in there and see what's going on. Welcome to my humble abode. Currently, we're still outside. This we might check out later. I stumbled across this for the first time. Apparently, this is the entrance to the so-called adventure mode, which is an actual story-driven campaign of sorts. Very, very strange that this would be here. The default mode is sandbox, and this is how you activate adventure. We might try that a little bit later on in the video. I'm very curious. So, my little humble abode has a crock pot, as well as a fire pit and a science machine. Uh, this is where one does science, one assumes. Now, the game's progression is mostly based around inventing things. So, by building the science machine, you get the ability to do just that. So, one of the new things that I could refine here, for instance, is boards, which I can make out of logs. There we go. When you prototype something, you actually gain some sanity back as well. That's the sanity meter up to the top right there. Once this goes down to about half, you are going to start hallucinating. Things are going to start to get weird. When it goes even lower than that, you will actually get, end up getting attacked by stuff that is... I don't know if it's a hallucination or not, but it's pretty damn evil. If you kill some of it, you actually get some sanity back as well, which is always nice to see. Ah, I could build myself a sign. Why not? I, I don't actually think there's any purpose to this at all, from what I can tell. Maybe there's a way to write on it, but I don't have a pen, so I guess that's not going to be happening. I'll feed some logs to the fire. Now, this game does have a day-night cycle, very similar to games like Minecraft and Terraria. Nighttime is dangerous. However, not so similar to those games, nighttime is basically lethal. If you do not have a light source when it is the dead of night, you will be murdered by things in the dark. There is no question about that. You will simply not survive. It's, it's pretty unpleasant, I've got to say. Now, I'm going to try and make myself some food because, as you can see right there, that is my stomach bar. If my stomach bar goes down to zero, I die. It's not so good. I'll put some food in the crock pot here. I don't really... Maybe if I throw some carrots in there. There we go. And seeds, I suppose. No, nope, seeds isn't going to go in there. I can put some monster meat in there. I don't know what this is actually going to do. Let's cook it up and find out. So there are various recipes available for the crock pot. I actually managed to make a ratatouille earlier, and it turned out fairly well. I have no idea what's going to end up happening there, though. Some more survival items available, it would seem. A straw roll. Now, this is useful. This allows you to sleep through the night, also regains you some of your... What have we got? What have we got? It is meatballs! Delicious! I shall eat the meatballs. Fantastic. That should keep me going for a while. Straw roll lets you sleep throughout the night, which is rather useful in and of itself. It will get you through to the daytime. You can't really do much at nighttime because of that requirement for a light source. You can run around with a torch if you like, but it's fairly risky to do so. Alright, so, this game is about resource gathering. There's a lot of clicking involved in this game. You've got to click on resources, you have to gather them, and you then have to make other stuff out of them. Now, right now, I'm actually lacking a lot of stuff, so I'm going to go find some saplings to get some twigs. The reason I'm going to get that is because I need to make a pickaxe so that I can mine some more of that stuff. Or alternatively, I can turn it into another axe. I do have one axe, but it's fairly badly damaged. Items have durability, as you might expect. There appears to be a, a walrus camp over there. I have no idea what that is. So you have to replace it. As far as I know, you cannot repair items. There doesn't seem to be a way of doing that, so you are constantly building stuff. Now, speaking of building stuff, hmm, I think a spear would be nice. 
Let's see if I can make some rope, and then I can probably craft a spear. Ah, I have to go research it, so I'll go back to my camp. Now, the map is extremely detailed, and you can zoom in, which is very, very useful, because knowing where resources are, considering you constantly expend them, is pretty damn vital. You can't just walk around without food, you will just starve to death. It is, in that sense, a true survival game. More so than games like Minecraft and Terraria. Now, they don't have those kind of elements. Yeah, sure, you can die. And yes, on hardcore mode, it will delete your character. But compared to this, not even close. Not even close. This focuses very much on the survival, less on the construction. You can't really customize anything here. I'll lay down a, a trap. It's not going to be all that useful yet. I think I need to bait it with something good. Seeds, maybe. I believe they eat seeds, so there we go. Hopefully this will bait a bird in. That would be nice. All right, what else was I going to prototype? All right, if I recall correctly, I was going to make a spear. Did I? Oh, I used all my rope, didn't I? Okay, let's make some more. I need grass for that anyway, so that's all good. I should be able to prototype a spear. Ah! I used all my twigs. For some reason, you need both twigs and actual wood logs are different resources, which is kind of weird. You would think that you could get them both. Ah, excellent. One of my traps over here managed to catch myself a rabbit, which I will then horribly murder and cook later. Uh, place another trap down now. Putting it near the rabbit hole is usually a good idea. Baiting it will generally get you a result much quicker, however. Now, when an animal runs into a trap, it's automatically sprung, and you can get what's inside. In that case, I've got myself another rabbit, which is always nice. Baiting it with the appropriate kind of food is usually a good way of actually getting a hold of what you need. But every now and again, you can just kind of litter the area with traps, and every now and again, you'll catch something purely by accident. Which is a reasonable way of doing things, but... It really depends on how desperate you are for food, honestly. If you don't have a lot of carrots, then you're not going to be catching a lot of rabbits anytime soon. Thankfully, there seem to be a reasonable amount of carrots around here. Now, you might ask, is it all hunter-gathering? No, it's actually not. There are more advanced things you can do. Later down the line, you can construct buildings, you can actually make farms, and you can farm your own stuff. Which is usually a good idea, I tend to find. Creating a more sustainable environment is good. A lot of this stuff grows back, but some of it doesn't. And you also can't hunt at night. Like, the rabbits just go into the holes at that point. So I'm going to leave that out there because I'll be able to gather it later on now. It is a little bit dark. It's not too bad, but I'm slowly losing sanity in the twilight here, which is actually fine because I'm at like 200 sanity, so I'm not really too worried about that. That means I can use this time. And then I can head back to camp and I will be able to go to bed and then wake up in the morning and do some more stuff. Yes, quite. All right. Let's get to the mining. Now, if I want to have one major complaint about Don't Starve, I think it's, it's the real nature of the game itself. It is a game about clicking. Lots and lots and lots of clicking. And it's a little easy to kind of get sick of that because... You are compelled to gather pretty much everything in sight because resources are finite, as is your time. It's not a game where you can really take your time. You've got to be pretty quick about things. You've got to want to write, do I have enough food? Am I going to be okay today? Ah, didn't catch a bird. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Maybe you need to put it somewhere near a trees. There's a bird right there. It's right there, but apparently it doesn't care. Never mind. You've got to think about whether you've got enough food, you've got to think about whether you've got enough light, and of course, you've got to consider building stuff because you can't just hang around and say, oh, I'm just going to subsist on berries. That doesn't really work. There are now seasons in the game, and as a direct result, once you get into the winter months, it's you're going to need to make warm clothes, things are going to get more difficult, and every couple of nights you get attacked by hellhounds. Why? Uh, because the game is evil like that. I assume that's a mechanic designed to keep the pace and the tension up in the game. I actually haven't been attacked by hounds yet. It's probably a case that that will happen sooner rather than later, though. I'm going to make myself a new axe. I actually do need a new one because this one is about to wear off. It is about to be nighttime. I'll go and deal with the sleeping momentarily, but I do want to chop down a couple more trees. There we go. Every time you swing this thing and hit something, it actually does result in you... Breaking your axe. As you can see, I broke one axe and now I'm working on another one. You can make some more durable equipment, stuff basically out of gold later on if you want, and you'd be surprised how easy it actually is to get that. 
more often than not, it's actually easier to get gold than it is to get flint. It's so one of the problems that I've had with the game, actually, is there are times when you spawn in and you just don't have anything. Oh god, it's dark. Uh, I... Quick, quick, I need something to burn. Pine cans. There we go, that should... I can't see. Bollocks. This is actually gonna suck. Oh no. Did I just die? I don't believe it. Ah, I don't believe it. <laughs> God! Oh, man. That was, that was about an hour's worth of work there that just disappeared. Well, welcome to Don't Starve. You die. It happens. And in that case, it happened because it got too dark. I was a little too slow on getting my fire pit going, and I was instantly killed by something in the dark. So, bollocks to that. Alright, I guess we're back to the start again. Now, I think this is probably one of the biggest issues that I personally have with the game, but I'm not going to point to it as an actual problem with it. Yeah. So, I need you to differentiate here before you start posting dumb YouTube comments. There is a difference between subjective preference and objective problem. So, what this game does, very specifically, is require a certain amount of time out of you and then re basically reset everything if you make too many mistakes yeah and it says it punishes you for that and it says right you've got to start again and that means that all the progress that you've done is lost so you've built up all the stuff you've gathered all the resources you need to get all this great all this great stuff and then you end up hello <laughs> oh i could actually get him come on Come on. There is a technique to getting these guys. There we go. Sweet. It's a gobbler, if you wondered. It's a giant turkey. Very, very useful. Sometimes find them around berry bus bushes. They are very tempted by berries. I'm actually getting pretty lucky with my start this time around. Now, the randomized and procedurally generated nature of the world means that there are times when you will just get absolutely screwed over. The biomes won't be spawned in such a way as to be helpful. The last couple of games, I've not been able to find fields of beefalo. Now, finding beefalo is pretty important because they generate manure. And that manure is used for a lot of really important stuff like farms. So if you want to be able to farm stuff, and more to the point, beefalo are a really good source of meat as well then you need to find beefalo. But it spawns you at a random part of the world, so you won't necessarily find them, and it's different every time. So this time around, I think I've got a pretty good start, because I found a decent amount of flint very, very early, which means I was able to craft an axe and get some wood. So that means tonight I should be able to build a fire without too much of a problem. And it seems like I'm also quite close to a kind of deserty area, which means it's probably covered in rocks. So if I make a pickaxe, I can probably get the gold that I need to actually get a science machine on day one and then to start to develop stuff. However, there are times when you spawn in and that just simply doesn't happen. You end up getting the absolute most worthless crap you could imagine. There was one game where I spawned and it took me about half an hour to find flint. There just wasn't any anywhere. It was ridiculous. I don't know why, but that can happen. In this case, I think I've got extremely lucky. So I actually should be able to build a science machine on day one. And I can start to establish a base camp. Now, in terms of establishing a base camp in this game, you want to try and do it in such an area where you're close to all the resources you need. So, on a border between multiple biomes is always good. So, like, between here and here would be good, but I want to try and find a good source of beefalo and also these dudes. Pigs. Yes. These pigmen in the game are actually friendly, assuming that you feed them, and they can help you with various things. In this case, there's some curious stuff going on over here. There is a pig house. There is a crank thing. Now, th these are kind of weird. It's it's hard to explain because I don't fully understand it myself. But what I can say about this game is that it's very much what I like to call a wiki game. This game does not explain a damn thing. <laughs> and I, think, I honestly think that Clay kind of relishes in that. And I think that arguably that's a strength because that's what some people want from their games. I hesitate to use the term roguelike because at this point it's so far removed and so alien from the original rogue game and stuff like Angband and things like that, that it's, I would hesitate to call it a roguelike. It is a survival game, of which it, there aren't really all that many games within that genre. 
Oh, I got some gold. Yeah, I can totally build a science machine right now. So I might set up my base camp around. Yeah, there's, there's some rabbits here. There's some berry bushes. I'm quite near the pig guy. I don't want to set it up near here because these evil flowers apparently reduce your sanity. So that's not so good. But I'm thinking around here would be pretty good. So what we're going to do first, if I actually get some more rocks, I can make a fire pit. Fire pits are permanent, whereas campfires will burn out. Fire pits also don't, they don't set everything on fire around them. If you put too much fire on a campfire, then too much fire on a campfire. What the hell am I talking about? If you put too much fuel on campfire, what can end up happening is it can set everything around it on fire, including you, which is not all that pleasant. There we go. I think I've probably got enough rocks now for a fire pit. Excellent. So around here is good for the time being. I'll probably move this base camp at some point. You can get a, a hammer, which will demolish everything. But right now, this is a good place to put it. I do want to make a science machine. I do need some more rocks for that. I've got a little bit of time before it gets too crazy. I'm going to leave that nitra there because I don't really need it. Ooh, got to be careful. <laughs> A tall bird, yes. It, rather aggressive, but otherwise innocent monster that is very territorial, so I don't want to wake it up if at all possible. So this overall idea that I'm talking about, this notion, this kind of restart thing, is it makes the game inherently niche, in my opinion. And there are some people that won't be into that because they don't feel like they really get good value for their time out of a game like this. I'm the kind of person that is a bit too busy to really play a lot of games like this because the notion of having all my progress wiped and having to start again when I have very little time in my day is, I wouldn't call it abhorrent, but it's unpleasant. I could definitely understand the attractiveness of it though. Like if I had more time, this would be the kind of game that I would play a ton of because I would actually find that idea of being on the edge all the time valuable it would be a nice method of increasing the tension obviously the skill involved in it as well i might have a backpack there we go instantly makes things a little bit easier because i get eight more inventory slots unfortunately it does take a part of your equipment that can otherwise be used for other kind of useful things it is going to be nighttime very shortly can i no i can't get one more treat so i'm gonna make a dash back to base camp I don't believe I can make a straw roll yet. I don't think I have enough grass for that. No, I don't. So on the first night, unfortunately, you often have to just kind of hang around and say, yep, this is what I'm doing. But I can cook some food and everything can be wonderful. So I shall cook the drumstick. It will be delicious. Cook the morsel. I may feed the morsel to the pig, actually, so the pig will follow me around. I believe it's actually possible to equip pigs with stuff, but I haven't really figured out that one yet. I'm not going to cook all the carrots. The reason I'm not going to cook all the carrots is quite simply because having a carrot as bait would be good. I don't think roasted carrots work like that. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Alright, let's eat the drumstick. That should be the majority of... Ah, that's surprisingly not that good. Alright, you can also cook berries, which is like the, just the kind of squidgy, jammy berries. There we go. Pretty good for filling the food back up, though. Thankfully, this night doesn't last for all that long. If it lasted as long as the day, that would be pretty terrible because unlike something like minecraft where you could start to dig underground at night or terraria where you can kind of do the same thing you can't really do jack at night in this game you've just kind of got to survive thankfully they do have a means for you to avoid that in by using the bedroll unfortunately the bedroll is consumed because the game absolutely hates you in every possible way well let's talk about what's compelling about it the first thing that's compelling about this game is that it's a genuine survival experience and there aren't all that many games that do that there are games which like to tout survival elements. I think 2013 may very well be the year of survival. Yeah? There are multiple commercial titles, big AAA stuff, that are touting survival elements. Yeah? Hunting for food and things like that. There's, there's really not a lot to that, honestly, but it's there. But I think as a result, people are kind of getting teased by it. They're saying, oh, you know, wouldn't it be great if there was actually a survival game, right? And there are a couple. This is one of them. Myers and Martyr is another one. And you can check that one out, but it's it's a very strange game. It wasn't to my taste, let's put it that way. It's pretty hardcore survival and puzzle solving, though, where you're actually trying to survive and cure 
a deadly disease that you yourself have. I don't think you can even fight in that game. It's mostly just running away. But this game's also got that element of crafting in it as well, and I think, you know, the crafting system is pretty basic. I think it's just, it's utilitarian and nothing else, really. They've done it in such a way that there are certain tiers of crafting, but they're not quite as obvious. Like, you don't progress through tiers of materials in the same way that you would in a game like, say, Terraria. You know, in Terraria, there's like so many different kinds of swords. In a game like this, there's there's less of them, you know, there's less of that. But a lot of the items that you create and craft are designed around survival and not combat. Whereas something like Terraria, a lot of what you make is designed to make you tougher and make you fight better. And then in Minecraft, there's a bigger focus on creativity. So you're building custom stuff all over the place. And at that point in the game, survival element doesn't really matter that much because you're building stuff, you're building castles and all that. You're never gonna, well, maybe you will in a future update, but you're not gonna build a castle in Don't Starve. The whole point of Don't Starve is not to starve, is to survive as best you can, and pretty much know that inevitably, you are probably going to die. That is going to happen, and you're just gonna have to live with that fact. Now, the world that they've created here is surprisingly compelling. It's got a lot of character to it. The graphic style, I feel, really assists in that regard. Very much so. It's very unique graphic style. It's a very clay graphic style. Which is funny, because it doesn't look anything like any of the other clay games. But clay has a knack for nailing their art styles. And creating these very interesting and unique styles that other games simply don't do. Mark of the Ninja and Shank were both great examples of that. Eats, one of their earlier titles, kind of to some degree, but I think it really came into its own with Shank, you know. Shank was a great looking game. It's one of the best looking 2D games that I've ever seen. And then Mark of the Ninja was awesome as well, but in its own way. And then Don't Starve looks nothing like those games. I mean, it's hard to even know that this is a clay game, but it's got Clay's interesting sense of humor, it's got some weird characters, and the world itself is very, very odd indeed. It actually subtly mixes humor, some weird depressing stuff, as well as some almost Cthulhu Lovecraftian kind of horror. Ah, oh, some pig heads over here. Ah, Touchstone, right. This is the first time I've ever found one of these. Touchstones apparently allow you to respawn. Which apparently is a good thing, I guess. And then all these dead pigs. Alright, so I've touched a touchstone. I guess as a result, if I die, I will actually be able to respawn. Always good. Now, these are one use as far as I know, so I'll have to end up finding another touchstone later. But I think it's rather telling that this is the first time in maybe about seven, eight hours of play that I've actually run across a touchstone. You can increase the number of touchstones in the world, though, which will make it easier. But it felt like cheating. It really did. It's like they balanced the game in a very specific way, so why would I mess with it, right? It would. It seems weird to me to actually do that. But there you go. All right, it's getting dark. Time to head back to base camp, which is around there. Ah, there's a wormhole there. Useful to know. Wormholes are teleporters. Always nice to know. My my sanity is looking pretty good. I'm going to pick a flower, which does raise the sanity up there. Now, what about the fact that the game just doesn't tell you anything? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think there's there's a discussion to be had, and I think you're going to find a division in opinion here. I don't believe that it is possible to flat out say one way or the other whether or not that's actually a good or bad thing. I think that some people are going to hate it. As I said, it is one of those wiki games. I had to visit the wiki several times. I continue to have to visit the wiki to really figure stuff out. And it's slowly but surely working my way up to a certain point where I understand the game's mechanics a little bit better. And it's, I don't even think it's actually the game's mechanics, really. It's just like, it's almost like a point-and-click adventure game where it's like combine X with Y and hope that it actually works. And the game lacks guidance in that regard. It does tell you how to craft this stuff, but things like recipes for the crock pot, that stuff that I think you end up having to find out yourself. Alright, what do I want to make here? I can actually research some structures, but I think it's only walls. I don't really want to build walls yet. A chest would be nice. Do I have enough wood? Yeah, I do. We can start to refine some boards. And then I can make a chest. That would be pretty nice to have. Ah, I could also make a, a winterometer. Measures the ambient air temperature. Let's do that. Don't know what it... I assume it's useful to know 
Cold go up, red go down. All right. <laughs> so it's currently a little bit chilly, it would seem. I'm going to roast those in a minute. I do need to get that fire going, so let's throw some logs on it. I actually think throwing logs on it is probably better, or throwing pine cones on it, because... There we go. Nice and burny. That's what we like to see. Because honestly, saplings are a little bit more difficult to come across at times, whereas you get a lot of logs from knocking a tree down. Uh, what else can I research in the meantime? Survival-wise... Hmm. That seems like it would be a, a big backpack of some description. Always good to know. A tent. Yeah. Hmm. I need an alchemy engine for that. What do I... How do I make that? Let's find out. At least it does tell you these recipes. That's always good. But the flip side of the kind of pain in the ass of researching everything on wikis and things like that is also the element of discovery. If you go into the game and don't look at the wiki and just kind of discover things and slowly figure out for yourself what's going on, I think you're probably going to find a very rewarding experience here, if that's what you're into. However, some people are blatantly going to turn around and tell me, ain't nobody got time for that. And yeah, that's, that's actually a totally reasonable as well. There is no right or wrong answer here, I don't think. This is not one of these things where you can outright say, this is a bad game mechanic, or it should explain itself better. Especially when you're making a niche title like this. I think the clay knows their audience here, and as a direct result, they've created a title that they think will work with that audience. And I wouldn't say that they're wrong. I I think they, they got that right there. They understand what these guys actually want. And I'm in two minds about it, because I think I want it, but I'm not 100% certain. Or more to the point, it may very well be the Dwarf Fortress situation, where I know I want it, but ain't no one got time for that. I know I don't have time to mess around with the learning curve, I don't have time to read the guides, I don't have time to do the wiki nonsense. And as a direct result, I'm in a situation where I'd much rather watch people do it or read about it, kind of like EVE Online. Yeah? And funnily enough, I actually know how to play EVE. I played EVE probably for a good eight months before I decided, you know what, it probably, you know, I'm pretty much done with this. But I much, much prefer reading about EVE than I do actually playing it. Because I think it's a really compelling experience, but I just do not have the time, you know. I'm working every day. I think if I had a lot of free time, I would delve into this game in a really big way. Admittedly, who knows where the end game lies with this. This is one of those first impressions where I have to speculate so much in the end game and say, look, I don't know where it's going. Because, quite frankly, there we go. quite frankly, I don't have the time to reach it. And even if I did, who, say, who says that I'll get lucky enough this time around? Maybe I stumble across all the stuff that I need very, very quickly, and I don't end up running into an unfortunate situation or end up getting randomly eaten. A lot of the stuff you can avoid, so please don't get me wrong here. Maybe some people believe that I think that the game's based around luck. There is a luck aspect to it, but when you die most of the time, 95% of the time, it's your fault. Yeah, maybe you just blunder into an area, but most of the time you can get away. Like, for instance, if I go to those ponds, I'm going to get killed. I know this because these frogs are actually super lethal. Admittedly, the first time that you go up to frogs, you wouldn't expect them to horribly murder you. So this is the kind of thing that I was talking about when I say it's a wiki game. The game doesn't tell you that, and it's something that you have to learn via trial and error. Trial and error is not necessarily the best way of teaching someone in a game, but some people dig it. So, my overall conclusion on Don't Starve. Like, if I had the time to play this, I think I would enjoy it a great deal. The time that I do have to play it, I like it, but... Because I really want to get further on in the game and end up getting constantly frustrated because I screw up and have to start the whole thing again, I keep coming to this conclusion. It's like, is it really worth it? Yeah. Is it worth my time? And that's something I personally have to consider, I'm afraid. I, I wish that I didn't. It would be a cool situation if I didn't, but I do. So, there you go. I have a piggy. Julian. Julian the pig is very, very happy to see me. He is now my friend. He'll follow me around. He'll help me in fights. I believe it's even possible to get them to do stuff like cut down trees and stuff like that, but I 
Again, I don't know how. Haven't read the wiki on that. So, you know, uh, the game is not really all that self-explanatory. It's like, oh, what if I if I gave him a spear? No, that, if I click that, that will actually attack him. So, which is not what we're looking to do at all, is it? No, absolutely not. Go and chase some rabbits for me. That would be nice, but no, that's not going to happen either. It's an intriguing game. It's a curiosity. It's well-crafted, and I think that if they continue the development in the way that they're doing it right now, it's going to end up being a really cool experience. I think it already is now a cool experience, and it's unique. There's not a lot like it. I definitely value the innovation in that regard. I think it's mechanically sound, but not mechanically exemplary. Simply because their answer to a lot of it was, well, click it. Left click it. Do it. You could argue that the simplicity is beauty in and of itself. You can say that, yeah, the simplicity is helpful. It makes the game easier to play. It makes it more intuitive. But it also makes it way more repetitive. You know, running around every day and just gathering stuff is not necessarily all that interesting. I think you've got to be a very goal-driven experience. We have found the beefalo. This is where I should set my camp up, you see? Around this area. There's a wormhole over there. How perfect. Ah, yes. Manure. I could finally, finally set up a farm. Sounds like a good idea to me. But I think that you know whether or not Don't Starve is the kind of game for you from watching this kind of playthrough. I would suggest that you consider it if survival is what you're looking for. Because it is a finely crafted survival experience. And I have a feeling that it's going to only get better the further the development goes. I like the fact that they're continually updating the game with new content. And I like the fact that it's not just a straight up world. Everything's a little bit weird. Everything's a little bit strange. And there are still things to discover. I I don't know what that mysterious guy at the start had to do with me. I don't know why I should go through his door. I don't know what's going to be going on there. And that element of mystery is actually a really compelling part of the game. And you don't get a lot of that in similar games. You might think, well, oh, Terraria's got that. It doesn't. I mean, there's no story in Terraria. There's no story in Minecraft. This actually has a story to it, and it's got character. And I don't think that... I wouldn't even call them competing games, but games that have some similar ideas and do have some survival elements in it, I don't think they have that. So not only do you have a game here that manages to pull off survival, but it pulls it off in style. There's a lot to be said for that. Don't Starve, ladies and gentlemen, currently available directly from their website or also available on Steam. Bear in mind, this is a game that is continually in development. I don't know if it'll ever be finished, really. The style of game, who knows. My name's been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time.